There are games that you continue to think about after you've finished playing them, and for some reason, hex-based strategy games can really get their hooks into me. Vastille is a particularly impressive example of this popular genre from the mid to late 80s. In hex-based strategy games, you are given units that have a limited move set for which to set up offensive and defensive fronts as you try to take over the enemy's base. Vastille takes it a step further by adding giant mechs and heavy interactivity during the battle sequences. In most of the hex-based games I've played, the two parties involved in conflict will have an animation play and then take damage based on specific stats followed by a result. When you go into battle with either a base or an enemy in Vastille, you are actually given control of your unit and get to go at it in actual real-time combat. Now the stats definitely play a large part in the concepts like the amount of damage you deal, your resistance, and even your ability to move, but it makes one-sided battles seem a little bit more exciting. There were times when I had the much weaker unit, but crazy maneuvers and good shots resulted in me being the winner, even if only by a hair. Vastille was developed by Human Entertainment, best known for its Clock Tower series, and as a result has an incredibly story-based plot. The introduction is a massive 10 minute cutscene that details the entire conflict and politics around the war occurring on planet Vastille. The two main warring parties are between the dictator that rules the planet and the leader of the people opposing the dictatorship. The two are actually brothers as explained by the introduction and it's an interesting dynamic regardless of what side you choose. Thankfully this game came to the west, otherwise I don't think there's any way I would have figured out that plot. Working Designs, a talented localization team led by Victor Ireland, was responsible for bringing this title to the TurboGrafx CD, and I'm glad it did. The story grabs your attention before the gameplay has had a chance to get you hooked, and even the voice acting is a cut above the teenage dialogue I've grown to expect from these titles. Work, but sir, he is merely continuing the same policies your father originally implemented. I don't think Phalil has a clue. The game itself is slow paced, but it holds my attention for long play sessions the same way chess does. Even a loss teaches you something about strategy, and by the time you come to the later scenarios, it's been a long but fantastic journey. Even if you never get there, Bastille leaves a lasting impression on the very first mission. Graphically, the game is pretty average, although there are some moments where it shines. The title screen in particular has multiple layers and creates a striking visual for a first impression. I have to admit, the anime cutscenes and general gameplay don't even match the level of detail I saw in Ranma 1 Half or other such titles, but the one-on-one -on -one combat scenes do catch the eye. I also like the subtle but present music during your turns that feels like an odd hybrid between Muzak in an elevator and a cocktail party theme. It sounds frumpy when isolated, but in the context of the game and your turn, it's a great fit. I can't really sell the game much on what it looks like in this video, but trust me, if you've ever been a fan of the board game Risk or enjoyed in Advance Wars, this is a title you don't want to miss. A fantastic inclusion to the CD games of 1990.